All right, guys, so out for a little stroll by the lake today. We're going to be talking about a watch that I've had a few months now, the Oceanus. So far, I think my only regret with the watch is that I didn't get one sooner. I think everybody needs to experience an Oceanus at least once. So it's a beautiful day, and I thought I'd come down by the lake. I wanted to get some outside shots of the watch. I brought the drone with me too, so I think we'll pop that up in the air, and eventually we'll get back to the tabletop and take a closer look at the watch. So we are back. This is actually a couple of days later. I had some uh, family, a surprise visit after my trip down by the lake the other day and just finally getting to the tabletop here now. But this is a watch that if you are so inclined, and that's not the case for me and probably you either, but it's a watch that if you were a one watch person could easily be that one watch. The watch is the Oceanus OCW T3000. I've owned it now for about three months, a little more than three months, I think. And it's just a great everyday wear. It's a great travel watch, and it just looks and wears so good. Now, there is a lot happening with this watch. Sorry, I keep uh, distracting myself with the AR. The AR is incredible on this, but... There's a lot happening with this watch when it comes to the features and functions. I'm going to go over some of that, but if you want maybe a deeper dive on anything, let me know and I might do a second follow-up video at some point in time on the watch. I think we'll start with the form before we get to the function because that's one of the great things about this watch. Again, it just looks very good and the finish from everything under the crystal on the dial to the case and bracelet blows a lot of much more expensive watches out of the water. The dial is a matte, somewhat metallic black with three sub-dials. Well, really four if you count the small AM, PM indicator. They serve multiple purposes. At the nine is the day. That sub-dial shows also when you're in the stopwatch mode. It can display the battery level and whether you're in daylight savings or not. Up top, the sub-dial there displays the time in 24 hours for the time that's on your main handset. At 6 is the second time zone with a small AM PM indicator at the top right of it. And I'll show you soon, but that bottom subdial is also used when you're in the chronograph mode. Over at the 3, we have the date framed in steel. And beside that, the applied Oceanus logo, which it itself is very well finished. Then Casio Oceanus printed below that. The raised hour markers are multifaceted, and no matter what angle you're looking at them, they always tend to catch the light, which helps a lot with legibility. A couple other things that makes this a standout when it comes to legibility is one, the crystal. This is easily the best AR I've ever experienced in person. Damasco and Zinn were the kings of AR for me until now, but the Oceanus I find to be even better. I had this on a recent vacation in Mexico, and even in the brightest days, the watch was super easy to read. The only downside is the AR coating is on both sides of the sapphire crystal, and I've had a couple of watches now where the AR has gotten scuffed up, so hasn't happened yet on this one, but it's something to think about. So... We're good to go in bright lighting situations, but this is a great performer in low light too. The icy blue loom is evenly applied. It's long lasting and yeah, getting the time in pretty well any situation is a breeze with this watch and that's not easy to do, especially with how much information is displayed on the dial. 
The finish work on the case is crazy good. The cases are finished in the same factory as Grand Seiko and some other higher end G-Shock models. I was looking up the company when I was doing some research for the video and I did find one image on their site. I'm going to try to find it again and put it up on screen that does show a couple of Oceanus models. The watch is made with titanium and other than Grand Seiko, this is one of the better finished titanium watches I've ever experienced hands-on. The brushwork and the polish work is top notch. Mine is getting a little marked up now, but the lines are just very sharp. That's one negative with the watch. It does scratch fairly easily, I find. Now, I've had a few people ask me what is up with the bezel markers. They're offsets for GMT time. The reason, though, we have the 14 and the 13 there is because there's a few places that, for different reasons, opted to go for, example, plus 14 as opposed to minus 10 GMT. Kind of hurts my brain just talking about it, but if you search a place like the Republic of Kiribati, which is a group of islands in the Pacific, you can find out a little bit more on that if you are interested. Although it is not perfect, one of the things I love about the watch is the bracelet. It does not have the tightest tolerances or anything. It's actually quite rattly, and the clasp has a good size gap there when you're, particularly when you're wearing the watch, but it is just so comfortable. The clasp has a built in on the fly micro adjust you just use the same pushers you use to open the clasp and that's going to give you about a half length's worth of play which is great for those humid days where you get a bit of wrist swell so a couple features of the watch one is it has bluetooth connectivity so you're able to connect to the oceanus app and I have to say, other than the original setup, I pretty much never use it. When I first got the watch, it hadn't seen much daylight in a while, so I did, did check the app to see the battery level a few times, but that was about it. If you're traveling, you can set your second time zone very easily in app, so I would definitely use it for that, but that's about as much as I'd use it for, or as much as I found myself using it for. It also gets radio signal to keep the home time updated. So even without the app, as long as you're getting signal, it'll adjust automatically. Another thing the app does, I should mention, and I'll put a screenshot up of it here, is you can check how often the watch has gotten signal through either Bluetooth or radio signal. And there's a chart in the app that displays that. The other is a chart that shows the amount of energy the solar cell has generated over time. One function of the watch that's really handy is the time swapping if you're traveling between two time zones. To swap your second time zone, which again is displayed at the 6 with your local time, all you have to do is push this top pusher and holder for about 3 seconds. That's going to start the process and the time zones will change. It does take a little bit of time for that to happen. To reverse the process, you do the same, just hold it again for three seconds. If you're a regular travel, that is just such a useful feature of the watch, I find. Now, I don't use it all that often, but another mode the watch has is the chronograph mode. The pusher at the 8 o'clock does a couple different things. One being, it's the pusher you push to connect through Bluetooth to your phone, but it's also a mode button. And one push puts us in chronograph mode, so we'll do that right now. Now we are in chronograph mode, and we'll start it up with the top pusher. And you can see it going there. So the second hand becomes the second counter for the chronograph. Then the second time zone subdial switches to the minute and hours for the chronograph. Same as a regular chronograph, the top pusher is the stop and start. And I've just stopped it there. The bottom pusher is reset. And to get it back into regular timekeeping mode, it's just a matter of pushing that bottom button again. Size-wise, the watch comes in at a case width of somewhere between 41.5 and 42. It's a, a little bit tricky to measure with the pushers and the crown in the way, but 
It's right around there. Lug to lug is 47.9 millimeters. Lug opening is an odd size at 21 millimeters and the thickness is 11.1 millimeters. So good size and should work for most wrist sizes. Water resist on the watch is 200 meters. So you can really do just about anything with this watch. And here it is on my seven and a quarter inch wrist. And if you've never tried an Oceanus, you are missing out. I'm already eyeing a couple other models and I'll definitely be getting another. I'm into the automatics and mechanicals, but some of these techier watches are just a lot of fun. Trying to think of negatives with it, but for the cost you're paying, there's not a lot. I could see this being a bit of a scratch magnet with the high polished areas, especially the bezel. So if that's something that bothers you, that's something to definitely think about. But otherwise, this is a fantastic watch for the cost. Full retail on this, I believe, is a little over 800 USD, but you shouldn't have a problem finding it for less. And I couldn't recommend it more. So there you go. Again, there's a ton of stuff I haven't covered with this thing. Maybe I'll put together one more video on it down the road and fill in some of the blanks from this video. We will see. So appreciate you taking a few minutes to stop by and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye. <music>